there are several unmet needs in CLL that have changed over time. Initially, the biggest unmet need happened to be in the patients with the 17P deletion. And since the advent of abrutinib and agents like abrutinib, so other B cell receptor agents and the BCL2 inhibitors, this really has transformed that treatment of that subgroup entirely. So that's definitely one of, it has moved not necessarily from an unmet need entirely. Um, we still, it's much better. We still need to work out other therapies for patients with 17P, but clearly this unmet need has been now, those patients do very well on the new therapies, and so we're very excited about that. Other unmet needs have to deal with um, patients who, there's a small proportion of patients with CLL, about 10% of patients, I mean, anywhere, probably in the literature between five and 15%, I think we underreport it because they just don't, a lot of, um, a lot of patients don't get evaluated for this, but there's what they call Richter's transformation. So that's when a subset of, in an area of your CLL cells, they can transform to more aggressive lymphoma. The most common lymphoma is a large cell lymphoma, um, but we can also see Hodgkin's lymphoma and even what they call PLL or prolymphocytic leukemia. Those are much, much rarer. So the majority of patients, um, it is for diffuse large cell lymphoma. And so that absolutely is an unmet need. Um, traditionally, we treat those folks with lymphoma-based therapies that are large cell lymphoma-based regimens, but invariably they are not successful um, and it is just not a good treatment option. So we're looking at checkpoint inhibitors, we're looking at newer agents for patients with Richter's. Um, clearly, absolutely an unmet need and because it's not so common, um, we are looking at pooled analysis, trying to do clinical trials that are multi-center to gather those patients and put them on novel agents because standard lymphoma-based therapy just doesn't cut it. Um, and so that's a definite unmet need for CLL. Um, when we talk about other unmet needs, I think there's no doubt that an area that has come up is um, supportive care for CLL patients. I mean, is this an unmet need or just something that just needs to be discussed? Um, I think that because it's a chronic illness, you know, um, it requires a team. You know, in my practice, I have a team, I have a nurse practitioner, I have a nurse, I have a research staff. And so, the, you know, we kind of teach our CLL folks to call us and, you know, a little more extra hand-holding, talk us about, you know, healthcare maintenance is important for patients with CLL, screening for other cancers are important. There's a higher incidence of other cancers, so I'm always bugging my patients, you know, be good about your skin cancer screening, you know, do your mammo, do your pap, do, do all the colonoscopies, your all age-appropriate screening, follow up on those cancers because those are curative, right? So an unmet need, I think, has to do with the support of CLL patients. I think CLL patients sometimes get pushed off uh, because they went, you know, the, the doctor may be busy seeing other cancers that are actively being treated and they don't need treatment. So they're like, you're fine, your blood counts are good, move on. I got to see my 20 other patients with breast and lung and colon. And so I think that there's no doubt that CLL folks may feel like they're a little bit in an isolated category. And so we need to do better education and support of both the physicians, but also the CLL folks. I think that it's a chronic illness and they become part of your practice as if you were, you know, an internal medicine practice and they really, you're, they're with you for years. And so there's a little bit of, I think, some emotional, psychological and physical unmet needs that are probably in inherent to just having the disease itself.